quiz. How many people, by show of hands, know who this is? Be honest. <laughs> okay. Now, by show of hands, how many people know who this is? All right. Now, one more time, by show of hands, how many people know who this is? That's what I figured. Most of you are probably asking right now, who is this and why should I care about who this is? Well, this is Willie Dixon. He's an extremely famous blues music writer, producer, and musician. And without him, a lot of the music that we're listening to today, whether it be what Elvis did with rock and roll or what Kanye West is doing now with hip hop and rap, wouldn't be what it is today. So what I want to try and give you today is information about who Willie Dixon is, who, what he's actually done, and how he's influenced the music world and just the world in general. Willie Dixon was born July 1st, 1915, in Vicksburg, Mississippi. He grew up in a small town, Vicksburg was a very extremely small town, and went and spent his young years as a gospel singer in his church. When he was young, his father would always tell him, before you die, you need to live. And before you learn to die, you need to learn how to live. He related this to Worth Long, an interview for African American Review, in which he said, that was the philosophy I held true to myself as I went through life as he went on doing his job as a musician. Before he became a musician, he moved to Chicago and in 1937 became a boxer, which seems kind of odd for someone who later went on to play the bass for one of the most prestigious record companies at the time, Chess Records. Um, what he's done, as you can see here, these right here, this is Willie Dixon, and this man right here is Leonard Chess, the owner and founder of Chess Records which is one of the big three music studios of the 40s and 50s, <coughs> along with Sun Records and Stax Records. And in between Lee Dixon, on his left, or his right, our left, is Howlin' Wolf, a famous blues singer who Lee Dixon wrote songs for. And on his right is Sonny Boy Williamson, another, of, another famous blues singer and harmonica player. When Lee Dixon started joining, joined the chess team, he started out as a studio bass player, playing for several artists, some popular, some not so popular. As time went on, though, he started beginning to show his creativity when it came to songwriting. And over time, Leonard Chess started seeing how much his songs became successful, and how much they sold, and how good they did. So he started offering them to some of his clients, including Helen Wolf and Sonny Boy Williams, in addition to the man sitting right here was Muddy Waters, who was considered to be the godfather of the blues. Willie Dixon wrote probably um, Muddy Waters' breakthrough song and his biggest commercial hit, which is called Hoochie Coochie Man. Sounds kind of silly, but at the time it was a hugely successful hit and went on to become one of his most famous singles. As time went on, he started writing more songs and became a producer for Chess Records. And at one point, Artists like Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters would literally fight over who would get the next Willie Dixon song because they were so successful and brought them such great acclaim. Um, it, as, as well as helping these blues artists, he also helped affect some of the early rock and roll bands of the time. Some of the, some bands such as the Rolling Stones and Cream, which you can see on the far right, which is Eric Clapton's first band, started covering Willie Dixon songs that were used by are other blues artists. And um, Bruce Eber, who wrote a biography about Willie Dixon, noted how Led Zeppelin, which is the band here, covered two of his songs on their second album. However, when they recorded the songs and then when they produced the album, they failed to recognize <coughs> Willie Dixon as one of the songwriters. They claimed songs as their own. <coughs> After this came out, Chess Records and Willie Dixon got somewhat angry about this for having Led Zeppelin steal their songs and not give them credit for it. So they sued Led Zeppelin for the rights to the, for including Willie Dixon's name on the song. There, there was no judgment in court, but they had, but Led Zeppelin did pay a large sum to Willie Dixon for replications for anything they might have done. In conclusion, I just want to say, I'll give a quote that Emily S. Roof in the New York Times used in her article describing blues music and blues artists at the time. She says, Willie Dixon once said that the blues is the roots, the rest is the fruits. What he means by that is blues music is like the roots of the tree. They were there from the beginning. 
they have planted themselves in and all other forms of music, whether it be rock and roll, whether it be pop, whether it be hip hop, have all bloomed from this tree that the blues started. And without Willie Dixon being one of the key roots of this tree, we wouldn't be able to hear Elvis Presley become the king of rock and roll or listen to Kanye West on the radio today. So next time you hear one of your favorite artists, just think that that person wouldn't be where they are without the man Willie Dixon.